The first step is to install npm and git. Open your terminal and enter the following command. dnf y install npm and then space git. And press enter. Now update npm to the latest version by typing npm install npm g. Next, clone the uptime kuma repository to your system. Navigate to the slash op directory and run the git clone command. Then navigate to the uptime kuma directory. Once you're in the uptime kuma directory, run the setup command to install all the necessary dependencies. Now, install PM2, a process manager for Node.js applications. At this point, you are ready to start the server. Run the PM2 start command to start the uptime kuma server. To ensure the server runs automatically after a reboot, add it to the startup list by running the following command. Moving on to the next step, install Nginx, a popular web server and reverse proxy. The first step in setting up Nginx is to add the Nginx repository to your system. To do this, you need to create a new repository file named nginx.repo in the yum repos directory. You can use the following command to create the file and add the repository information. Once the repository has been added to your system, you can use the package manager to install Nginx. Run the following command to remove any existing Nginx packages and install the latest version. After installing Nginx, you need to configure the default configuration file to serve uptime Kuma. Before editing the file, it is recommended that you make a backup of the original file. Now, you can create a new configuration file for Nginx to act as a reverse proxy of uptime Kuma. In the configuration file, specify the server name, SSL certificates, and additional settings for reverse proxy to work. Save and close the file. Then, create an SSL certificate for your domain. The following procedure will create a self-signed certificate. First, create a directory where you will store your SSL certificate and key. You can use the following command to create a directory named SSL under the slash etc slash nginx directory. Next, you need to create a configuration file that contains the information required to generate a certificate. You can use your preferred text editor to create a file named sslinfo.txt and add the following content. The configuration file specifies the key length, the distinguished name, and the subject alternative name for the certificate. Change this configuration as appropriate for your setup. Once you have created the configuration file, you can use OpenSSL command to generate a self-signed certificate. Run the following command to generate a certificate and key with a validity of 10 years. This command will create two files, the private key, localhost.key, and the public certificate, localhost.crt, in the slash etc slash nginx slash ssl directory. Finally, you can start and enable nginx using the following command. This command starts nginx and configures it to start automatically at boot. Now, add HTTPS service to the firewall using the following command. This command adds HTTPS service to the public zone of the firewall and makes the change permanent. After adding the HTTPS service to the firewall, you need to reload the firewall to apply the changes. You can use the following command to reload the firewall. At this point, you've successfully installed and configured Uptime Kuma with a reverse proxy and SSL. Now you can access it securely by opening your browser and navigating to server name you have set in the Nginx configuration earlier. But for this video, I have set it to uptimekuma.lazy.test so I am going to use that as my URL. You will be presented with a web UI and you will be required to create an admin account. Enter a username and password and click create to create an administrator account. This will log you into Uptime Kuma's dashboard. To start monitoring a website, click the add new monitor button. Fill out the details of the site that you want to monitor. For this example, I will monitor the Uptime Kuma's dashboard. At the advanced option, it's a good idea to enable certificate expiration checking. I will also enable ignoring HTTPS error checking since I am using a self-signed certificate. After filling up the monitor information, click on the save button to start monitoring. Shortly after, Uptime Kuma will start monitoring the site and provide various uptime metrics as shown. Next, create a ping monitor to monitor your server availability. Click again the add new monitor button on the top left corner of the screen. Select ping as the monitor type. Then, give your monitor a name and enter the URL or IP address that you want to monitor. Give your monitor a description and click on save. Once you're done configuring the monitor, your new ping monitor will now appear in the monitor list. You can now view the status and the availability of your server. Next, 
I will show you how to create a PostgreSQL monitor to monitor your database's availability. First, log into your PostgreSQL database as a super user and create a user for Uptime Kuma to use to connect to PostgreSQL. And then grant the necessary privileges to Uptime Kuma user. For monitoring purposes, grant the select privilege on all tables in the database. Now exit the PostgreSQL prompt and modify the pg underscore HBA configuration file. At the bottom of the file, add the authentication method for the Uptime Kuma user. Save and exit the file and reload PostgreSQL. Now, you can use the Uptime underscore Kuma user to connect to your PostgreSQL database and perform read-only queries. Go back to Uptime Kuma dashboard and click Add New Monitor. Select PostgreSQL as the monitor type. Then, give your monitor a name and enter the details of your PostgreSQL database, such as the host, port, database name, username, and password. You can specify the SQL query to be executed. This allows you to tailor the monitor to the specific needs of your PostgreSQL database. Then add a definition for your monitor and click on Save. Your new PostgreSQL monitor will now appear in the monitor list. Next, create a MySQL monitor for your MySQL database's availability. Log into your MySQL database and create a user for Uptime Kuma. Also grant select permission and refresh the permission cache. Now that has been set up, go back to the Uptime Kuma dashboard, click on Add New Monitor, and select MySQL as the monitor type. Then, give your monitor a name and enter the details of your MySQL database, such as the host, port, database name, username, and password. Input the SQL query you want to be executed. You can use Select One just to check if a database is accessible and functioning properly. At the bottom of the page, you can put a description for the monitor. Once you're done configuring, Click at the Save button. Your new MySQL monitor will now appear in the monitor list. In addition to monitoring your servers and databases, Uptime Kuma also allows you to create a public status page to display the current status and uptime of your services. To get started, click on the Status Pages tab on the top navigation bar. Then, click on the New Status Page button. Give your status page a name and create a customized URL, then click on Next. I want my status pages in dark theme so I'm going to enable this option. Select the monitors that you want to display on the page. For this example, I'm going to select all the monitors that I just created earlier. Once you've configured your status page, click on the save button to create the page. Your new status page will now be displayed in the list of status pages. You can access the page by clicking on the URL link. And that's it. Creating a status page in Uptime Kuma is quick and easy and it allows you to keep your users informed about the status and uptime of your services. Thanks for watching, and happy monitoring!